There is a train line in Tokyo that goes round and round in circles. It's called the Yamanote line. If you've been watching my videos from Japan, you'll know a little bit about the west side by now. But on the other side of the circle lies a district not as busy and lively as the ones I've showed you already, but still a fairly popular area, especially for gamers and anime fans. It's called Akihabara. It's known as a shopping district with primary focus on video games, anime and manga goods and generally anything in the electronics sector. One evening back in April I decided that it was time again to head out into Tokyo and do some photography and so equipped with my Lumix GX80 I took a couple trains to a station not far from Akihabara to walk my way there and photograph whatever I find on the way. As you can probably tell, the conditions weren't exactly the most comfortable. It was raining, but luckily not too heavily, but the wind was tough, especially with the umbrella. So here are two shots. The first one was actually an accident, but it resulted in such a cool looking shot in my opinion. I love how the shake conveniently turned out here. This was the original idea, which however really doesn't look as interesting, I find. As I came to the bridge, I thought that the reflections on the river looked really cool, but getting a straightforward shot is a bit boring, so I tried to purposefully add some shake to the shot. Most attempts didn't work out at all, but I ended up getting this shot, which I think isn't even too bad. So what happened here is that I seem to have confused the autofocus and the focus is slightly off, which in combination with just a light shake looks quite pretty I find. I like the atmosphere of the photograph that feels like a blurry memory from a night out in Tokyo. Then, as you just saw, I snapped a quick panning shot of this person with the umbrella passing, and I think the result is pretty neat. The lighting could have some more focus on the subject, but the bright clothes help to compensate that. The blur is quite long, but everything is still rather recognisable, so I think it's cool. So the other photographs I had shot on the bridge so far weren't really remarkable so I didn't comment on them because due to me shooting digital in this video there are a lot of shots still to come and commenting all would make this video a bit too long. However this here is the last shot of the bridge and while I don't think it's special in any way there are a couple things that I'd like to point out which I appreciate. The first being the backlit look created by all the cars. Then it seems that my lens was a little wet because around some of the lights you can see a circle as if there were tiny drops of water there which create this effect that I find to be a nice feature to add to the overall look of the photo. And lastly, I just want to shout out the person who had their warm lighting turned on in the apartment on the right, because that just adds a sweet detail that I appreciate. Then, after I had left the bridge, I was walking on this main road where I was approaching a 7-Eleven. On the ground in front of it, I found a puddle that was big enough to clearly reflect the colourful lights of the 7-Eleven, and so I waited for two people who were coming my way to potentially become part of the composition. Here is the result, and I like it. It's not perfect, not exactly what I was hoping for, but still a cool shot in my opinion that doesn't purely focus on the reflection, but also combines it with more elements to add some more interest. A minor thing I also appreciate is the cold light coming from above and behind, reflected on the ground. Mm -hmm. 
Then, I found a spot that had some good looking lighting, and so I tried to photograph a few different subjects that passed through in the hopes for a cool shot. The result is alright, but a little boring I find. This was the best subject that I captured, but I still think that the main interesting part of this shot is just the lighting, but apart from that, there's not really much here. This was a total miss, sadly. The lighting and the subject just don't go well together, and I feel a bit lost when looking at this photograph. Next, I got this classic. At least, I think this has been done a lot, but for a good reason. The vibrant red that reflects on the ground simply looks intriguing. I like the addition of the plants on the right. This one turned out pretty cool in my opinion, I love the texture added by the slightly dirty glass, I only wish that the person in the middle were facing this way. an interesting window and went a bit closer. I think this was a vet and I was intrigued by the patterns on the glass because it seemed to anonymize the person inside but still let all the colors of the room come through. Here's the result and I love how this turned out. The colors through the glass look great and the glass patterns worked out as I had hoped. A little detail that adds a nice sprinkle of interest are the bottles in front of the door. It just makes me curious about why they are there. Here I came to a korbang, a small Japanese police station, and I loved how the officers sat in there looking quite stoic and so I tried to get a shot. Here it is, and I love how this one turned out. There are so many details scattered across the frame, each adding a little extra something to the shot that I find myself going from one end to the other but never losing the focus on the officer. Apart from the officer being a cool subject in my opinion, I think the top light looks great here, and again, the dirty windows really help with diffusing the lights on the ceiling. But then a less central, but still a lovely secondary subject are, for example, the two bicycles in the foreground with their boxes on the back. But another thing I love is the poster on the wall behind the officer. No idea what it's about, but it looks cute and hence contrasts the otherwise quite serious tone of a police station. Another neat addition is the red light at the top that looks really cool, but is so far on the edge of the frame that it doesn't distract. Anyway, a lot that I appreciate here. like the shaky night out atmosphere again. Surely having these two from the front would have been more engaging, but I like it nevertheless. shot two photographs at this restaurant, of which the second one I like a lot. I'm fond of the lighting on the two stools and also the look of the plastic curtains that hang down on both sides of the frame. Then, 
As I was crossing the road here, I spotted a person on the other crossing jumping around. I guess they forgot the jacket and were feeling cold now and hence jumping to warm up? Not sure though. Anyway, I tried to photograph the scene, but sadly the photograph turned out quite random looking and pretty boring. Here I was in a spot with only a few lights, where the next lights were ahead of me and hence the wet ground reflected that light wonderfully. I got this shot of the two subjects walking towards those lights, resulting in a slightly silhouetted look of this foreground to the scene, which I think looks quite cool. Next, I found this projection of the whale logo that was disrupted by the wooden trolley and the foot of one of the people standing beside it. I love this photo. The projection adds the initial interesting aspect for me. The clear circle is a cool part of the composition and I like the way the trolley then interacts with the light by adding a harsh rectangular shadow. But what makes this photograph for me is the foot on the trolley. It's such a human move to do that. It's something unnecessary, the ground was flat, but I totally relate to the person putting their foot on there and I believe I probably would have done the same. Also, the colour match of the shoe and the red of the whale is a great bonus in my opinion. So here I was at first intending to photograph the window of the restaurant, but then I was intrigued by the person in orange next to it with their bicycle. The result isn't great, but I do like the whizzing feel of the subject in the scene. So this shot I got because I found the sign a little funny, but that's probably mostly just because I couldn't read it. I just saw the sign that signaled to me no humans, which I found amusing and therefore I got the shot, even though the photograph isn't that interesting, I think. So here, I randomly came by this very liminal looking space and I got a shot. I love the look here, the way the lights reflect off the wall and at the end of the hallway there's this diagonal line of light that emphasises the sign with the blue writing. I'm really happy with this one. Then, here I came across a restaurant that had some outside seating. I found a tiny table that had guests until shortly, and now the dishes were still left on the table lit by a warm light that I tried to capture. 
Here's the result, and I really like how this one turned out. The lighting puts an emphasis on the dishes, which together with the wood and the warmth of the light create a pleasing colour palette. Also, I like how the other guests are visible in the background, adding to a lively atmosphere in the photograph. Then, by now I had arrived in the heart of Akihabara, where all the tall, colourful buildings of this district rise. I wanted to get a photo of the view, and I decided to try it with a crowd of people in the foreground crossing the road. Here's the shot, and it's okay. I like it for what it shows, it's exactly what I want to capture, but it's not special in any way, it's just fine. As I was walking along the street here, I spotted a popping red shirt, and in front of the group, closer to me, was this guy just standing around, but what caught me was the warm light that hit the shoulder. Here's the result, and I think this is pretty cool. As you can probably tell, I helped out in Lightroom a little to make the warm light on the shoulder turn red, so that it matches the red shirt behind, and I think it creates a fun layered composition. I spent some more time walking around Akihabara to get my last photographs, none of which turned out particularly remarkable though. This is the last one. After that, I headed to Akihabara station and ended this shoot. It was overall a successful one, I'd say. I had so much fun again simply strolling around Tokyo, so whatever results I get, I'm still happy to have been out in the city exploring places that I don't know yet. I hope you had some fun joining me and seeing the process behind the photographs. Lastly, before I say goodbye, I'd like to sincerely thank the lovely people who are supporting me and my work on Patreon. Thank you so much. If you're interested in educational videos such as tutorials or Lightroom presets or even physical postcards, you can check out what I offer via the link in the description. Also, I have a print shop, by the way, also in the description. With that said, I hope to see you again soon. Until then, goodbye.